Hello children. Today we are going to do a chapter from your 10th class book, First Flight. The name of the chapter is A Letter to God. It is written by G. L. Funtis. <coughs> G. L. G. L. Funtis was a Mexican novelist, poet and a journalist. This chapter, A Letter to God, is a story of extreme faith in God. Through this story, the writer has tried to depict the invincible faith in God of a poor farmer. So the poor farmer Lencho is an honest and hardworking farmer. <clears throat> now, before I start explaining the chapter, let me tell you briefly about the chapter. Lencho was a poor farmer and he, was, he had extreme deep faith in God. This year he had a very good harvest and he expected that when he sells it, he will get a good amount after selling it. But it needed a uh, rainfall. If it rained, then it, will, it was expected to have a good harvest. So he prayed to God to have a rainfall. Fortunately, it also started raining. But when it started, everybody was happy that it is good for his crop. But later on, it took a bad shape. And then it started hailstorm and it all covered, all his field was covered with the hailstorm and it seems as if the salt or the snow is spread all over the field. All his uh, field, all his crops, all his harvest was destroyed. As we know, he had very deep faith in God. He wrote a letter to God and then somehow he got some money. After that, he again went to the post office to collect the rest of the amount. Let us see how it all goes. Now, this is the beginning of the story. In this story, it explains that the house, the only one in the entire valley, <clears throat> sat on the crest of a low hill. His house was made on the top of the hill. From this height, one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest. So it was all covered with the corn ripe. Ripe corn, it was his harvest. Ra uh, corn is that makai, you must be knowing that. So that corn was completely ripe and entire uh, his field was covered with the corn. Uh, uh, it was covered with the ripe corn. And it also had the flowers which indicated that it is ready to be cut. The only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower. As I said that they expected a good shower, a good rainfall, which would help them getting a good harvest. Throughout the morning, Lencho, who knew his fields intimately, intimately is, he was very friendly to his place. He knew his field very well. He knew his harvest. He knew his crops very well. So he wanted just the rainfall which would help in the cutting before the cutting of the crop it will make it better so who knew his fields intimately had done nothing less else but see the sky towards the northeast he looked in the sky look, look at the sky side in the northeast direction because he expected that there would uh, collect some cloud and then it will have a rainfall now we are really going to get some water woman Woman, this woman is his wife. So he was talking to his wife who was cooking there. The night meal she was preparing. The woman who was preparing supper replied, Yes, God willing. The older boys, the woman, his wife said that, Yes, God wish, it's God wish. If he wants, he will give us a rainfall and then we will have a good crop. Now the elderly boys were uh, working in the field and the younger boys, smaller ones were playing near the house until the woman called them for their dinner. So after that, they called the younger and the elderly boys to have their dinner. It was during the meal that just as Lencho had predicted, big drops of rain began to fall. Now they had collected the cloud in the sky and it started raining. Now he was overjoyed because this is what he wanted for his harvest. This is what he wanted for his crop. He knew that if it is very, uh, if it rains, it will give him a better crop. So he was very happy. 
big drops of rain began to fall. In the northeast, huge mountains of clouds could be seen approaching. It was coming close. The air was fresh and sweet. The man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. He wanted to have the experience of rainfall on his body. He wanted, the, he wanted to have the touch of the drops of rainfall. So he went out to have the feeling, to have this joy. And when he returned, he exclaimed, These aren't raindrops falling from the sky. They are new coins. As I said, that if it was a good harvest for him, he would have a big amount of money. So he is talking here about the coins. Now he said that the small coins, the small raindrops are the small coins and the bigger raindrops are the bigger coins. It means that it will help him in getting a good crop and then he can get a better amount. So he says the big drops are 10 cent pieces and the little ones are 5 cent. So this cent is the currency mode. As we have rupees and paise, in the same way he is talking about cent. That bigger amount he is going to get after this rainfall. With the satisfied expression, he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain. Now everything was covered with water and he was very happy that my harvest has got a good rainfall. Water is covered and it is well uh, irrigated. The uh, field is well irrigated with the rainfall. But suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain, very large hailstones began to fall. Now what happened? This started taking a bad shape as it has started very well. But later on he saw that it was taking a bad shape and it started now the hailstones. Hailstones are those balls that falls from the sky in the shape of stones. So, this ko ole kehte hain. Ole barasthe hain na asman se. So, this is what it started. It started falling on the field. Now, it was a dangerous scene for them. They were not happy now. These truly did, did, did resemble new silver coins. It seemed as if it is silver coins. The boys exposing themselves to the rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls. It all looks like pearls. You must also have collected it. So he's, the children went to collect it. But now it was getting bad. The man, Lencho, was the, now exclaimed. It's really getting bad now, exclaimed the man. I hope it passes quickly. Now he wished that this goes quickly. It does not continue for a long time. <clears throat> because if this hail storm continued for a long time, all the harvest will, all the crops will be destroyed. It will all be covered with the hail stones and it will be damaged. There will not be any standing crop. All will fall down on the ground and there will not be any crop in the plants. It did not pass quickly. Now the hailstorm did not pass quickly. It was continuously still falling down. For an hour the hail rained on the house, the garden, the hillside, the cornfield, on the whole valley. The field was white as if covered with salt. Everything was covered with hailstones and it looked as if it is covered with salt. It looked as if it is covered with snow. So everything was covered white. Not a leaf remained on the tree. Nothing was visible, only white like salt or snow. Everything was visible there. No leaf, no greenery, nothing was there. The corn was totally destroyed. This is what Lenchu was expecting. When it started, do you remember, he said, I hope it passes quickly. So he wanted it to pass quickly. Otherwise, he expected that the crop will be destroyed. And this is what happened now. Not a leaf remained on the trees. The flowers were gone from the plants. Lencho's soul was filled with sadness. He was very sad by now. When the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons, a plague of locusts would
would have left more than this. The hail has left nothing. Now he compares that his uh, harvest has been destroyed. He compares that if locust, locust is a uh, insect that destroys the standing crops. But that also, even if the locust damage the crop, something is left at least. But this hail has left nothing. This year we will have no corn. That night was a sorrowful one. All our work for nothing. There is no one who can help us. We will all go hungry this year. This is all the statement of the whole family. Lencho was very sad and everybody was talking in the house, was talking about this destruction that they will have nothing for the whole year. This was the hard work of the entire year that got wasted within one or two hours after the hailstorm, everything was destroyed. So they were very sad and very sorrowfully they spent the whole night. But in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house, solitary is lonely. They were in the lonely place, in a, at a distant place. So in the middle of the valley they were living and there was a single hope, help from God. As we started and I said that he was a very honest but he was very religious also. He had deep faith in God. He always believed in God that if there is no one to help, God will definitely help us. So with that thought, he says, don't be so upset. Even though this seems like a total loss, remember, no one dies of hunger because God is there to help everyone. Nobody dies of hunger and everybody gets help from the God. So don't be so upset. Even though this seems like a total loss, no one dies of hunger. That is what they say. No one dies of hunger. So they had a belief that nobody will die of, uh, die of hunger. All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope, the help of God, whose eyes as he had been instructed see everything, even what is deep in one's conscience. As I said that he had deep faith in God, he thought that God knows everything. Even if we are, even if we are in trouble, God knows it. He said that he has learned from his childhood that God can see even our conscience, even our subconscious mind. God knows everything, whatever is there in our mind or whatever feelings we have. It is not necessary that we speak every word to God, only then God will understand. So this was the belief of Lencho. Lencho was an ox of a man working like, a, like an animal in the fields, but still he knew how to write. Now what he thought, he thought that God knows everything and if I inform God through any medium, then God can help me. So now he decided that he will write a letter to God. Although he worked in the field like ox, but he knew how to write. So he decided to write a letter to God. Now what he did? The following Sunday at daybreak, daybreak in the morning time when the day starts, he began to write a letter to God, which he himself would carry. He planned that he will write a letter and he would carry it to the town and place it in the mail. It was nothing less than a letter to God. He decided to write a letter to God and then he will go to the post office and he will drop in the mail. This is what he decided. So he started writing a letter to God. Let us see what he has written in his letter. God, he wrote, if you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes. Because the hailstorm dot 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 means that hailstorm has destroyed all my crops and I cannot survive. I cannot help my family to live because I don't have any money. I cannot sell my crop. I cannot sell my harvest. Uh, I cannot sell any uh, crop, corn. So I cannot get any money. You please help me. He wrote and he addressed on the envelope to God as if the letter will reach to God. He uh, uh, wrote uh, to God on the envelope and put the letter inside and still trouble went and still trouble. He was in trouble still and he went to town. At the post office, he placed a stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox. Now he reached the post office and dropped it in the mailbox with all confidence that God will definitely reply him and send him money because he never thought that God is such a kind of thing that he will not help him. 
so he had complete blind faith in god that that god will definitely help him money and he will get help from god now what he did <clears throat> on the uh, he uh, placed the dropped it in the mailbox one of the employees who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to god now the postman was there in the post office he collected the letter and when he saw the let that the letter was addressed to god he started laughing heartily heartily means bahut zor se hasna usse bahut hansi aayi he laughed a lot and he took the letter to his boss right because in his entire career in his entire job life he had never seen a letter for god so it was a surprising thing and it made him laugh also so never in his career as a postman had he known that address now the postmaster a fat amiable fellow amiable is friendly so he was a very good jolly friendly person he went to his boss and when his boss saw the letter he also started laughing he also broke out laughing but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk commented now his boss also started laughing but soon after laugh he got serious and he talked to him that how can a person have such a faith in god because we also have faith in god we also know that god helps us but we don't have that much blind faith that i can communicate to god i can write a letter to god and god will write me the letter in reply or we cannot even expect that we will make a call to god and god will talk to us so he was very serious that how can this man have this faith that he has written a letter to god addressing the name as god so what faith i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter starting up a correspondence with god he was very surprised that how can one have such a faith that he will write a letter to god kaise koi ye soch sakta hai ki hum god ko letter likhenge aur god hame reply dega us letter ka how was it possible so that man stopped laughing and he thought on that now he thought that lencho that person who had written the letter had so deep faith in god so he talked to the postmaster that we will reply his letter let us see what is there inside the letter so in order not to shake the writer's faith in god the postmaster came up with an idea answer the letter he thought that whatever he has written to god he will reply usne socha ki main letter ka jawab de dunga whatever he wanted but when they opened they saw that he had some expectation from god so it was not only replying the letter there was something more required for giving the reply but when he opened it it was evident that to answer it he needed something more than goodwill it was not only ink paper that was needed for the reply of the letter they wanted they wanted money because he had expected money lencho had written about the demand of his money but he stuck to his resolution but the postmaster thought that as i have decided that i will help this man so i will send him that amount some amount so for that purpose what he did he gave some share from his salary and he also collected from his friends and the employees to uh, donate some money in charity and help that needy person so everybody collected some amount and they wanted to send it to lencho but he stuck to his resolution he asked for money from his employees he himself gave part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity so they all collected money and put in the envelope and uh, wanted to send it to lencho it was impossible for him to gather together the 100 pesos but they collected the money they could not collect 100 pesos so whatever they collected they just put inside the envelope he put the money in an envelope addressed to lencho and with it a letter containing only a single word as a god now they wrote as if the god has sent it the following sunday again lencho came for the reply of the god because he had deep faith as we know and he expected that god will definitely send him the amount so the following sunday lencho came a bit earlier than usual 
to ask if there was a letter for him. Now he came and he met that postman, postman and he wanted to know about his reply because he was expecting that definitely God will send him a reply. It was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed looked on from his office. Postman met Lencho and he handed over the envelope and postmaster was looking at both of them from a distance from the office he was looking because postmaster wanted to see the experience of Len uh, on Lencho's face because he thought that when he will see the amount he will be very happy to get the amount from God. So the postmaster wanted to see that expression on his face. Now performed a good deed, looked on from his office. He was looking from his office. Lencho showed not the slightest surprise. When Lencho got the envelope, he had no surprise at all, as if he was expecting the same. He was expecting that God will definitely send him money. So he did not have the slightest surprise on seeing the money. Such was his confidence. He was so confident that God will send him money. But he became angry when he counted the money. But there was an expression on his face. It was an expression of anger because when he counted the money, money was short as he had demanded from God 100 pesos. And when he counted, it was less than 100 pesos. It was only 70 pesos. So he had an expression of anger on his face. Now God could not have made a mistake, nor could he have denied Lencho what he had requested. Now, Lencho had in his mind that God cannot cheat me. God cannot be dishonest. So God must have sent me the entire amount. But somebody has taken from that amount because he believed he had the confidence that God must have sent him 100 pesos. So where has gone 30 pesos? This was there in his mind. Now immediately what action he took, let us see. Immediately, Lencho went up to the window to ask for paper and ink. There is a table made in the post office or the bank for writing. So he took a pen and paper and he started writing on the public writing table. He started to write with much wrinkling of his brow caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas. Now he had a, a wrinkled brow. He was just thinking, he was angry, he was sad because he had got less amount. So he started writing to God. When he finished, he went to the window to buy a stamp which he lit and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist. What he did, he knew that without stamp letter cannot go, it cannot be delivered to the person. So what he did, he bought, an, uh, he bought a stamp also once again and he pasted it on the envelope with the blow of his fist. And then it was ready to send to God. So the letter was inside and it was ready to God. He had already written that it has to go to God. That is the address. And then he fixed it. The moment the letter fell into the mailbox, the postmaster went to open it. So he wrote and immediately after writing it, he went from there because he had a contentment that now I have complained to God and definitely God will receive the letter and he will send me the tip reply that where has 30 pesos gone? Who has taken 30 pesos from my envelope? So very confidently he dropped the letter and went from there. And the postmaster was also looking from his office room. Now immediately after Lencho went, the postmaster came and he wanted to see what is there in the uh, letter. So it said in the letter what he had written. Let us see. God of the money that I asked for only 70 pesos reached me. He said that I had demanded 100 pesos but I have received only 70 pesos that has come to me. Pesos is the currency note. Right. So he said that I wanted 100 and you have sent me only 70 pesos. Send me the rest. Rest is the rest of, rest of the amount. So he says that whatever amount is left, you please send me. 
what amount was left now it was 30 pesos that was left since i need it very much we know that he needed it badly because his harvest his crop was wasted so what he did he said that i need it badly i need it very much but don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks lencho lencho is the writer so he has written his name at the end of the letter and he has written that post office employees are bunch bunch matlab jhund bucha so they are crooks matlab dishonest so what he says that these post office employees are the bunch of crooks they are very dishonest they must have taken my, my amount so you please send me the left amount the rest of the amount because i need it very badly now children i think that i have explained you the chapter well and you all have understood it very well with this we come to the end of the chapter i hope you all have understood it well if you have any doubt please do write in comment box i'll reply and help you definitely as soon as i get your response thank you bye bye have a nice day